Now then, welcome back to another video. It has been a minute. Well, it's been like maybe, what, a month for you? But for me, it's been close to three months since I've actually filmed anything for this channel. And just a couple of reasons for that, really. One, I just wanted to have a summer off, spend it with the family, you know, and just chill and not make videos in potentially awful, ridiculous temperatures, which we didn't get, by the way. Now, the second reason, is because while I, I've been thinking about the way I do these videos over the last year, year and a half, and while I really love making YouTube videos, I am quite frankly tired of the bull <laughs> Now what I mean by that is I found myself making videos that the algorithm would like, you know, chasing views and all of that nonsense. And honestly, I want to get back to making videos about things that I just think are cool and that you might think are cool as well. And what I felt like I was doing was doing photography in order to make a video rather than making videos about my photography if that makes any sense at all so going forward my intention is to get this channel back to the reason it really exists and that's to show you that you can make great work regardless of the camera gear that you have and that you as a photographer are the most important element within the photography process you know you don't need the fanciest gear you really don't honestly a crap mechanic with the best tools is still a crap mechanic all right, your camera doesn't matter. Another reason I wanted to change things up and get back to something uh, like this is because I honestly, it started to feel a little bit dishonest, which didn't sit well, to be honest. I mean, not like I was actively lying to you, but when I'm making videos like X camera in 24, is it any good? Well, yes, of course it is, obviously. If it was good in 2012, it's still good now, isn't it? The only thing that's actually changed isn't the camera, it's just expectation. So, yes, that camera is still fine. What the hell are you talking about? Needless to say, there's not going to be any more of that. And if I do talk about a camera or a lens, it's because I think said camera or lens is cool. And I think that you might think it's cool too. Anyway, now that's out of the way, what are we doing? So I'm out here with Lee Gill tonight. Uh, because he's been, we've been talking, he's been looking for a camera specifically for video for YouTube and he wanted something with decent autofocus. Uh, I've been talking about the Osmo Pocket 3 and so on. I mentioned the GH5, but the GH5 autofocus is pants, so that wasn't really something he was looking for. But then I remembered, obviously, I have the Olympus EM1 Mark II, which is solid camera, weather sealed, 4K, best eye base, you know, awesome autofocus for video, that kind of stuff. So he's having a day with my Olympus AM1 Mark II. And as Lee is a DSLR shooter for his photo work, I think it'll be interesting to find out how he feels about the Olympus AM1 Mark II. You know, he's gone for, he's, you know, full frame for photos, micro four thirds for video, potentially. It's gonna be like a slightly different experience for him. So if you're interested in that as well, I'll link his channel in the description. Now then, as for what I'm doing, apart from uh, trying to avoid these midges. Since Lee is using the EM1 Mark II, which is generally my go-to photo camera, I figured I would bring out the Sony A7 and the Helios 44M and just kind of have a look around to see if we can get some of those cool autumn scenes. I brought some macro tubes as well, so I can get some more punched in stuff. And um, yeah, we've got maybe an hour of light. The sun is like rapidly going down now. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start taking some pictures and um, what I want to do as well is I want to try and answer a question which I keep getting on the channel. It's weird. It's, it's like one question that keeps popping up all the time. And that is, how do I focus with these manual lenses on cameras that don't have any type of autofocus or focus assist within them? You know, like the DSLRs, the 5D, the 60, etc. And honestly, it's not something I really ever thought about because I've been doing it for so long. You, you know, my answer would be just, well, you just eyeball it. And is it perfect? No, you know, there's obviously a chance of missing, but I'm going to show you how to do it in a, in a visual way, hopefully. Just going to find something to photograph first. Now, for those of you who you know, shoot film, who regularly shoot in manual lenses, or who, you know, the, you older photographers who have been doing this since before autofocus was even a thing, you'll know how to do this. It will just be something you do. But for those people who are asking, here we go. All right, so just to clarify, yes, I know the A7 has focus peaking, but I'm going to turn it off for the purposes of this thing, just to show you what I do. And it's very simple. As I explained in one of the replies I gave, I kind of just find roughly where you're going to be, you know, kind of rock it backwards and forwards, and you can see it going in and out each way. And then you finally just settle on that sweet spot. And, you know, nine times out of 10, that works. But anyway, I want to try and show you it in real time if I can. So, um, yeah, we're running out of light, so let's get to it. All right, so we've just got this patch of, I think it might be heather. It's, the color's all gone now, but the, you know, the, the seed head things are still there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly put this into video mode 
and show you that whole rocking backwards and forwards thing that I do. And uh, hopefully you can see what I mean by it sort of coming in and out of focus until you kind of fine tune it down to that almost perfect focal plane. All right, so hopefully, as you can see, as I slide that backwards and forwards, you can see this one here coming in and out of focus. And it is literally just a case of getting that sweet spot, what looks about right, and then taking the shot. Is it a brilliant photo? No. Is it a good example? Well, if it's in focus, it is. Now, I don't know about you, but I think wind turbines at sunset just make for awesome subjects. Here on this scene, we've got wind turbine kind of on the left third, this bank of trees and the sun going down on the right third. I just wanted to talk about doing this same sort of rocking backwards and forwards using closed down apertures because I'm shooting this currently, the last one you just saw was all the way open at f2, whereas this I'm shooting this down at f5.6, maybe even go down to f8 given as it's full frame and you want a lot of depth. So, you know, the getting it in focus is even easier because your focal plane is much larger, especially since my focusing point is much further away. So again, I'm just winding it forwards and backwards to a point where I'm happy with how it looks and fire away. That's some nice color. Did I mention that I brought out macro tubes? Well, I did. And all I do with these, if you don't know, these simply increase the distance from the sensor to the back of the lens, therefore kind of eliminating the minimum focus distance of your lens, to making it kind of like a macro lens. So all I do is I literally, I've got my adapter for my lens. This is M42 lens to Sony mount your adapters, your adapter rather, just goes into the, Macro tubes and the macro tubes go straight onto the camera. There we go. So now there is these cool logs over here. I'm going to show you. Where are they? That thing there. There it is. So I'm gonna go for some, I'm gonna go for some texture type shots on this thing. Well, we've still got a little bit of light left. couple of ways you can make it easier to focus with these manual lenses on cameras that don't have focus in aids is to learn about the hyperfocal distances. Now most of these old lenses, many in fact if all of the ones I think that I own, have the distances printed on them lenses. So you can, for example, set the uh, the focal distance to say five meters and then at F8 you know that everything pretty much from three meters to infinity is gonna be in focus. So if you can judge where that five meter mark is and make your subject there, you're gonna have a really high hit rate. And finally, one more thing, as I do with some of these much closer shots, is to set your focusing distance to kind of, you know, as close as you can get really, and then just sort of gently move your body in and out to fine tune that focus. I find this helps immensely, and it's a little bit more of a finer adjustment than physically turning the lens and, you know, shaking things up a bit. 
All right, we have completely lost the light now, so I will thank you very much for watching. It has been, uh, it's been nice to get out again and do this again. There will not be such a big break between the next one, I promise. Don't forget to check out Lee's channel. He's over there somewhere doing stuff. Um, if you're interested in what he thinks of the EM1 Mark II, and I'll see you in the next one.